So there I was, at the range, at some point in 2017. An uncanny manifestation of handgun marksmanship loomed before me. 30 plus bullet holes arrayed in probably the tightest pattern I'd ever even seen on paper. And slowly, my gaze shifted down to my strong hand, in which there was a pistol. Now, part of me half expected to see some super expensive, super high-end gun like a Swiss Sig P210 or a high dollar 1911, but no. In my hand was a Beretta PX4 Compact, with which I had just shot the best group I'd ever shot. And that is what I call a reality check. And that's what we're going to talk about today here on Hipster Tactical. Alright, Beretta PX4 Compact, and this one is a long time coming because I've had this gun for a long time, and I'm, I'm excited to, you know, finally share it and get a chance to talk about it because I think it's important that we talk about it because, as the intro kind of suggests, this gun is really, really accurate, and it's probably more accurate than you'd expect it to be for the price point and just for what it is. And um, so that's that's kind of going to be the theme um, today for the review. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of, of that legendary group that I referenced in the intro, but it looks something like this. But honestly, it was even tighter. And, um, you know, the, it, it was just blew my mind. This gun just it always impresses me when I bring it to the range and um, you know part of what what makes it different is the fact that it's got this rotating barrel mechanism and um, we'll, we'll get into that and talk a little bit about why I think this this contributes contributes to its sublime shootability and um, <clears throat> I'll also add that of course this is the compact as, as the title suggests there there are three sizes of the Beretta PX4, the full size, the compact, which is the basically the mid size, and then there's the subcompact. So, you know, I'm going to kind of speak generally about the PX4, but I will say the subcompact PX4 does not have this rotating barrel mechanism. So just keep that in mind that, you know, what we're talking about here in terms of the very unique shooting dynamics is, is because of this rotating barrel, and you're not going to get that in the subcompact, but you will in the full size and the compact. As, as we do with these reviews, I want to get a little bit into the background and design of this thing and, and then we'll, we'll get into some more just nuanced discussion about how it shoots and uh, of course we'll talk about some more practical consideration, practical considerations about how it carries, what it's like to live with and what it's like to use and um, all, of, all of that. Also I will add I'm kind of getting over a cold or the flu or something like that so that's probably why my voice sounds a little little deeper and baritone. Maybe, maybe you like it. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll stick with this voice. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. All right, so I guess um, any discussion on any modern Beretta service pistol kind of has to begin with the 92. And um, if, if you know from watching my, my previous reviews, I love the Beretta 92. It's kind of my gold standard just as, as a really nice shooting service pistol. And um, the thing about the 92 is is the way it shoots is just so intuitive. You almost feel like you're in a conversation with the gun. You, you, the repo, recoil impulse just gives you the sense of feedback. You're just in tune with the pistol, and, and that's that's what I love about the Beretta 92. So, <clears throat> you know, after Beretta had seen a lot of success with the 92, and I think it stands to reason that they were just aware of and appreciated this this unique quality in, in how how the 92 shot and um, for their next pistol platform 
you'd think they'd, they'd want to kind of preserve that quality and, if not, accentuate it. You know, and, and if you know about the 92, it does not use a typical browning tilt barrel design. It uses the falling block design, which is pioneered by Walther on, on the P38. I do have a Walther P5, which uses that system, and, and it feels similar, and I think that's a big reason why the pistol feels a little different when you shoot it. The recoil impulse just seems a little bit kind of slower and more relaxed and it just, like I said, it's it's more communicative when you're shooting it. So instead of going to a, you know, Browning tilt barrel design or, or even kind of rehashing the falling block design, they went to something completely different and that is the rotating barrel design. And um, so in 1994, they introduced the Beretta Cougar, which was their first kind of foray into the world of rotating barrels. And rotating barrels had existed prior to that. Other, other guns had used them. Um, the Mexican Obregon pistol is, is one, I, you know, in the early 1900s or early 20th century that used one of used a rotating barrel there were some other ones i think before the cougar but even today the grand power guns from slovakia they use rotating barrels the mauser m2 which was available in like the late 90s early 2000s that used a rotating barrel so rotating barrels are a thing but <clears throat> beretta is kind of you know the most well known most prevalent example of a rotating barrel in, in like a mainstream pistol. So, like I said, 1994, they released the Cougar. In some ways, the Cougar's basically like a metal-framed PX4. Beretta engineers watching this, if, if you are, you're probably doing a facepalm about now, but there is some truth to that because I've, I've shot a Cougar, I had a Cougar for a while, I kind of wish I still had it. It was a fantastic shooting pistol, but the unique shooting characteristics of of the rotating barrel apply to, apply to both guns. Based on what I can find, I, I don't think the Cougar was particularly well loved in the time it was in production, which was from 94 to 2004. It was obviously a aesthetic departure from the kind of classic graceful look of the 92. It was kind of short and stubby and fat, so was the PX4. And I, I just think it was more of an acquired taste and you know the market wasn't as as receptive to it as Beretta had hoped. But by the late 90s and you know into the early 2000s it was clear the market was changing. You know people there was kind of a new generation of gun owners I think looking looking at newer guns Glock was really getting more popular. Polymer frames were becoming a lot more popular. You know, I think Beretta was looking to create something just more modern. And I will say they did have the Beretta 9000, which was their first polymer frame gun at some point in the, the late 90s. And for whatever reason, everyone seems to hate that gun. <laughs> I'm kind of curious about it. I'd like to own one someday. They're dirt cheap, and um, I probably will. So the, the 9000, which was Beretta's first polymer frame gun, wasn't all that successful. And then, <clears throat> you know, towards the end of the Cougar's run, they started basically, I think, reimagining the Cougar as a modern polymer frame offering. So in 2004, the PX4 was launched. And I get the sense that the reception was kind of lukewarm and people were kind of slow to embrace it. In 2008, I think, they released the subcompact PX4. And like I said, the subcompact PX4 does not use PX4, does not use the rotating barrel like the full size and the compact. So, I mean, to, to, I'm sure it's a fine gun and I've heard it's very reliable and it's a good gun, but to me, the reason you buy a PX4 is because you want that excellent, there's excellent shooting dynamics that come with the rotating barrel. And then by 2011, they introduced the compact, which this is. And um, again, the compact's kind of the mid-size. It's in many ways kind of the Glock 19 size of the PX4 family. On forums and stuff, if you read, a, a lot of people talk about this being a great DASA alternative to the Glock 19, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. This is a fantastic gun, and if you're looking for a gun in that size range, I think this is an awesome one. Again, I, I get the sense that the PX4 series was, was not super popular, but you know, with American buyers anyway, and you know, they did have, have they do have some uh, law enforcement and military contracts. If you go on, on Wikipedia, you see a lot of the different users of, of the PX4. A lot of different countries use it. Some, some special forces units 
use these. Uh, certain American police departments use these. So, you know, it's it's a, um, I, I believe the pistol's NATO certified or NATO verified, whatever, whatever that terminology is. So, I mean, the thing's a legit military grade service pistol that that is for sure again I, I just don't think there was a ton of interest with shooting enthusiasts here in the united states until we get into like the 2015 2016 time frame a guy named ernest langdon you may know his company langdon tactical technology and langdon Te tactical technology really specializes in taking stock service pistols and making improvements, kind of improving trigger pulls, adding just upgrades to make the gun shoot at a very high level. And initially, Ernest Langdon kind of started with Beretta platforms. I guess he won some, some shooting competitions using Beretta pistols. He really got behind the PX4 and people started to see that. In, in forum, he did, it was like a 40 or 50,000 round endurance test of a px4 compact and he kind of documented his progress and, and you know what he observed and, and everything going through this torture test basically of, of the px4 platform and you know what he found was was not only was the gun just very very accurate and very shootable and reliable but it was super durable and you know the guns are just tough the rotating action is tough it can stand up to punishment it can stand up to high round counts so people really started to discover the px4 platform around then and so did i i mean that's that's kind of what drew me to it and i ended up buying this pistol early 2017 this is the the langdon tactical edition and uh called the compact carry he also makes langdon offers a uh, version of the full size called the carry but this is the compact carry and it just offers you know from the factory some some upgrades over the standard compact or the standard full size and those include this kind of nifty gray Cerakote frame, which looks really nice. It gives it kind of a quasi-two-tone appearance with, with the black frame. It's got um, some proprietary night sights on it um, by Ameriglow, and um, actually the, the rear is blacked out, and it's got this, this nice big um, orange square with, with a tritium lamp inside it. It's a really good sight picture, and it's got low-profile levers. The normal PX4s you buy have, have levers that, that stick out and are kind of pokey, and these are very flush with the frame, so that's that's real nice if you want to carry one of these. And then also the, the Langdon Editions have the um, competition trigger pack um, that can go in the, in the PX4s, and th that's a Beretta offering. Anyway, so, you know, I was thrilled to get this gun, and I... I shot the shit out of it for, for a couple months in like 2017 and um, I got really good with it and and like it's it's an easy pistol to get good with trust me but you know that's when I shot that that group that I was talking about in the intro and it just blew my mind I mean this is such a fantastic shooting pistol and um, honestly you know like I said the the length edition has the the competition trigger pack in it I, I have rented a normal PX4 compact, like a regular one, and the trigger is still excellent. So that takes me to what I really want to talk about with the PX4 and what, what I'm excited to talk about, and that is just how surprisingly awesome this gun is to shoot. And, um, you know, I, it's not surprising that Beretta makes a nice shooting accurate pistol, but for, for what you're getting, this is just a, you know, modern polymer frame pistol, and I think you can find the the regular px4 compact for um you know about 500 bucks and for for that price you're getting a pistol that can shoot just like really no other gun And, you know, if I had to describe what, in one word, what the shooting experience of the PX4 is like, I, I'd say it's seamless. You know, just from, from grip to, to trigger to recoil impulse to hole in the target, everything just falls into this kind of harmonious cadence. It's like nothing breaks your concentration, nothing breaks your focus. And, you know, I, I think the, the rotating barrel mechanism is what makes that possible. And, you know... 
it, we've talked about the 92 and how, how smooth and communicative that gun is to shoot. I think this gun takes it up a level. Certainly there are other very accurate pistols which I own and, and shoot and um, I've shot some really tight groups with other pistols, some of which you've seen on, on the channel, but shooting really accurately just seems a little easier with this. I, I guess I'd say the accuracy with this just seems very available. That seems to be a common theme as, as I've you know, with other guns that have rotating barrels, they all just have a reputation for shooting very well. And if you read about the Slovakian Grand Power guns, which are all based on the rotating barrel um, design, you know, people say, like, damn, these guns can really shoot. They're really great shooters, and they're really accurate. The short-lived Mauser M2, that, that's kind of one that interests me and one I'd like to grab. You know, if you read some forum posts about that, people are like, they, they, they talk about how much the trigger sucks in that gun, but they also say, well, it's accurate. You know, the thing is a tack driver. So... You know, that seems to be something that is consistent when people talk about these rotating barrel actions. Certainly this one lives up to that. It's, it's a fantastic shooter. So what is it about the rotating barrel system that makes it so accurate and so shootable? Well, I'm not entirely sure from an engineering mechanical standpoint, but and I do have some, some thoughts about it, some more, um, more texture and more depth about it in my written review, but... I, I think, you know, one thing that I have read, and I think it's definitely true, is that there's, there's simply more, more energy being expended in that, that rotation cycle. And, you know, there's, there's just more movement mechanically going on with the rotating action versus, like, the short, choppy tilt barrel action. So, you know, it probably bleeds off more recoil energy, so it, it just feels a little softer. But one other thing I noticed is that... You know, I, I measured roughly the travel of the barrel of, of various guns in in the recoil cycle, and you know, I kind of locked it into, locked it back, and then kind of measured the the distance the barrel traveled as it locked into battery. And the the barrel travel seems a little farther on the PX4. I think it was about a half an inch, <clears throat> or just under half an inch. Whereas the you know the tilt barrel guns were right around a quarter inch, and the falling block guns, my 92 and my Walther P5, were right around a third of an inch. So does that mean more barrel travel means a softer, longer, more relaxed recoil impulse, more more communicative feel? Maybe you know too soon to tell. That's just one measurement I took. But suffice to say, I th I think more motion, more movement, more travel translates to this this kind of slower more more intuitive feel as the guns recoiling and i think that's that's what contributes to just the the excellent feel of of the rotating action another thing you read about with rotating barrel designs is they they can be a little more finicky with in terms of of dirt and crud and you know less than favorable lubrication standards and um you know, since I got this gun in 2017, I've put, like I said, over 2,000 rounds through it. Never had one malfunction. Um, now, with that Cougar I had, I, I mentioned earlier that 45 caliber Cougar, I did have some issues with that. But I think that was entirely my fault because I was putting Molly grease, that white TF, TB 25B, TF 25B grease in the rotating action because I thought, you know, that's what... People who knew about guns used, and oil was for losers, so I, you know, slathered the action and that stuff, and it, and it had jams, and that's, I think that stuff is too viscous for a rotating action, and um, it just, I had some problems with that, but with oil, never a problem with this. You know, I haven't cleaned it between every range trip, I haven't even re-lubed it between every range trip, but I, I, I always make sure the thing's not dry when I shoot it, I've never had a problem, so... With, with that, I think rotating barrels is perfectly reliable. It's it's pro it's proven. Like I said, this is used by military and law enforcement units around the world. So certainly it, it works, and um, other designs use it. So I don't think there's any reason to be afraid of a rotating barrel action for for a gun. Um, you know, you're going to depend on for self defense or concealed carry or, or just shooting. In any case, so obviously this is a compact, this is the compact, but this is this is the mid-size PX4, basically. It's quite a bit smaller than the full size, but not quite as small as the subcompact. So one would buy this, presumably, to use it as a carry gun. I, that's why I bought it, you know, <laughs> and um, I don't carry it that much. After, after a few months of just shooting, shooting the hell out of this thing and carrying it sometimes, 
I went back to my Sig P239. It's not because this gun doesn't shoot well. As I as I said, it's a fantastic shooter. But I want you to take a look at the slide. And uh, this is the this gun has the widest slide of any gun that I own. And um, you know, if you've been watching my reviews, I reviewed the um, the OG Sig P229 this summer, and that's that's this gun. And um, you know, the title of that video was Worth the Girth because this is such a fat, chunky gun, and it is a fat, chunky gun, and the PX4 is even fatter. So you can see how big that slide is. The PX4 slide is even wider. As I've talked about in my other videos, you know, a thin slide is so nice for concealed carry, and it just, it makes such a difference when you're you're putting this piece of, of metal and potentially polymer in your pants to carry. And, you know, this one, you feel the width of that slide. Now, I will say, especially with these low-profile levers, it's it's not going to poke you. It's not irritating from that perspective. And overall, the shape of the gun, I, you know, it's it's got you know, kind of smooth contours, so it's not uncomfortable from that standpoint, but you do feel it. You feel the bulk and the width when you're carrying it. You know, I'd rather carry something thinner, and I've talked about the double action trigger pull in the 92. It's not my favorite double action trigger pull. I, I tend to, the gun tends to jerk in my hands when the hammer falls on, on the 92, and it's just like no matter how hard I squeeze it, I can't just keep the gun completely immobilized and the sights bounce and that, that kind of affects my accuracy. You know, there is a difference, I, I think, with the Beretta triggers and, and I, double action triggers, and I think that comes down to over travel. I, I think it seems to let off, the the hammer seems to fall like earlier in the in the, the stroke of the trigger. So, you know, you're, you're going from pulling and pulling and pulling and then it, it just goes into you know, empty slack and the gun jerks in your hand and that's I think what contributes to that that bounce you get with uh, that I experience anyway on um, on the Beretta double actions. And this gun, I you know, the PX4 I think suffers from that. I think a little less than the 92, but it's still I prefer the double action on you know that P229 I just showed you. It's I prefer its double action trigger pull. Uh, the Smith & Wesson 3rd Gens, I think, have just awesome double action trigger pulls. You know, I will say with some practice, you know, you're just getting used to it. it, it certainly, it's usable. To me, and maybe this is a controversial perspective or a less than popular perspective, but I, I tend to think that the a DASA gun, a double action, single action gun, is kind of a willful compromise. You know, basically, you're not, you're giving up some precision on that first shot for, you know, a gun that's just seamlessly safe to carry yet ready to fire. And to me, that, that's it's kind of like a give and take. And and you know you're, you're going to not be as, action, as accurate as you probably would be with single action. And I know, like, some people watching this can shoot double actions just as accurate as a single action. But, I mean, I think that's the point of having a single action on a double action gun is that most people will shoot the single action trigger pull more accurately. So that's why it transitions. Long story short, I don't expect to shoot the DA on a DASA gun quite as accurately as I do single action, but certainly it needs to fall within some acceptable realm of accuracy that you can depend on it, and cert you can do that with, with this gun. So just to kind of wrap things up, you know, who should buy <laughs> the PX4 Compact? I would say everybody who doesn't have one, because it's, it's a superb gun, and yeah, I, I don't really carry it that much, but for the price and what you're getting, this level of shootability is just special. You know, if, if you do want something Glock 19 size and, and you don't mind, you know, a little bit wider of, of a slide and you don't mind that, this is just a superb carry gun. In my opinion, is this offers a higher level of shootability than just about any other gun in this class. That is is something that... I think makes it just worth owning and worth experiencing and you know if you if you really value just no BS accuracy in, in a normal gun you know not something that's gonna cost you an arm and a leg get a PX4 you will love it and I love it and I I love shooting it so glad I had the chance to share this with you alright just to give you uh, a glimpse of what's coming up next um, like 
two videos ago, I previewed my 1965 Colt Trooper. That is still in the shop getting refinished, so I will do that eventually, but um, I may do some other ones before that. The Walther P99 is a polymer frame, double action, single action, mid-size 9mm that compares very favorably to the PX4. You know, I, I've been bringing them both to the range recently, and it's, it's hard to... They both have their merits. They're both awesome. They're both really great shooters. They're both, you know, shoot to point of aim, and, and they're really natural, intuitive shooters. You know, in, in single action, just putting rounds through a single hole, I don't think anything could touch the PX4, but the P99 isn't far off. And, you know, when you kind of zoom out from those, you know, that core single action shootability that you find in the PX4, the, the P99's merits really become more and more apparent. They're both awesome guns. You couldn't go wrong with either one of them. I kind of want to want to talk about a little bit more in depth about the unique merits to each and which one do I ultimately like better if, if I do ultimately like one better. Another thing I, um, I wanted to mention, or another thing I wanted to show you, my most recent acquisition is an H&K P9S. And, um, I found this locally for a semi-decent price. These aren't cheap, but um, for, for what it is, it was a good price, especially with everything I got with it. But, uh, but this thing is awesome. And since the subject of this video is really about shootability, it's worth mentioning with this thing, too. This thing can shoot. Different than the PX4, different feel, different mechanics, but, but another one of those guns that just... Its shootability is, is the... A subject of discussion. So I'll probably still do the P99 first since you know I think it, it compares favorably to the PX4 but I will get to this at some point too because I think this is a unique one and, and definitely one I want to show. Alright so that does it for um, our PX4 review. So thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it and you know if you haven't check out the written reviews that I do on my blog site I, I get into some more depth some more texture about um, a lot of the stuff we talked about, and, and there's some more stuff I discuss in that that I didn't get to in the video, so definitely check that out, and um, you know, I have, for every video review I do, I have a written review for, for all these different guns. So also, if you, if you like hip-hop beats, like the one I did in the intro, the link to my SoundCloud is in the description, so check that out. This is Hipster Tactical, and I am Matt.